everyone. It's math chat yet again. And I have Dawn here and I have Veronica here. And they're Hello. going to be my pupils today. You know what? Let me turn this music down because I can barely hear myself. Okay. All right, let's do it. So today we're talking about the music zero. Is audible on the stream anymore? The music is not audible. Okay, hold on. <laughs> How about this? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, so today we're talking about zero quite a bit. Zero. What do we know about zero? Nothing. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Um, it's a very round number. It is round, yes, that's true. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we didn't know much about zero um, immediately. Zero was not even a number until a while later because people had no use for zero. They wanted to count their, you know, cattle or whatever and they had no reason to count zero cattle right so zero came along a little bit later and a couple of different people in different parts of the world kind of discovered zero or thought of zero all around kind of the same time um and now we have zero, and zero is extremely important to us. And we're going to talk about zero Why? and what? Why important? Why is it important? Because, yeah. um, well, for one, we couldn't have uh, bigger and bigger numbers if we didn't have zero, right? So we mm. would just be stuck at nine. <laughs> if oh, we true. Didn't have zero, <laughs> right? Because then we have ten. Um. And oh, is is that why Roman numerals are like that? Are they? I don't know much about Roman numerals. I just mean like they no. Um. I don't know how to explain this. Like they don't. It's not like two numbers right next to each other. It's mm -hmm. like one less than nine or. One more than than ten gets its own oh. number. It's not like one zero. Right. Yeah. Never thought I thought about know. that. Maybe this was before zero. Maybe they did. They were. This is ancient times before they started using zero in their number systems. Or I mean, at least in you know in Rome. <laughs> I don't know if in like India and the Middle East they were using it uh, yet. But that's a good point, yeah. So, that's why zero is important, for one. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why it's important. Um, but we're gonna go into... Uh, let's see. So today, okay, let's start off with a concept called inverses. What does inverse mean? Thoughts? Uh oh, are my people still there? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we're still here. <laughs> opposite? Yeah, opposite. It, it means opposite, yeah. In math, we can say that um, we have inverse operations. So addition. What's the inverse of addition? Subtraction. Subtraction. And the inverse of multiplication... Division. Is division. Yeah. And even if we were uh, solving an algebra equation and we saw a root, the inverse would be what? Square root? No. 
So we for a root we could, we were Four. talking we're we're talking about like square roots, cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, any type of root. Oh, okay. So what's the opposite of a root? How do we get rid of a root? Oh, what are they called? Like when you put the little number on top? Right. Exponents. Yeah. <laughs> so if we have the square root of 2, which was the subject of our last math chat, then we could square it and we would just get 2. Right? Yabba dabba do. <laughs> so those are inverses for those kind of things, but we also have something called an additive inverse. Whoops. Always picking the pencil when I don't need to. Additive ad inverse. Additive inverse. Any thoughts on what the additive inverse might be? Just based on the name? Subtractive inverse? Well, we're trying to define additive inverse. So what do you think that is? The opposite of the sum? The opposite of the sum. Okay. That's a good that's, the... that's a good guess for sure. So additive inverse is um, when we have a number and um, the inverse, the additive inverse would be a number that has the exact same absolute value, so the same distance from zero, but it, they're on opposite sides of zero. So for instance, the reason why we call it additive is we have positive five. Here's our, our little plus sign, right? Additive. And so the inverse would be negative five. So they're the same distance from zero, but they're on different sides of zero. They have different signs, but they have the same absolute value. So that's additive inverse. Um, and one important thing uh, one property of additive inverse that's super important is that if you add these two guys together, what do you get? Zero. Zero. Oh, our good friend zero. So if you add our additive inverses together, you will always get zero. So four and negative four, you get zero. Negative one half and one half, you get zero. Um, negative one million six hundred thousand four hundred twenty, and it's additive inverse. You get zero, right? So that's super important. So that's that's zero there. Zero shows up there. But I believe you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, but the. Uh, inverse that we're going to be mostly talking about today that is important for dividing by zero is called the multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative inverse. That's what's important to us today. And uh, Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and um, sometimes you you might people uh, refer to it as the reciprocal. Have you guys heard of this term? Yeah, reciprocal? we always called it reciprocal. I can't believe you're, there was another term all along. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so multiplicative inverse or reciprocal. And um, so the rule for multiplicative inverses is that basically if you have a whole number like four you turn that sucker into a fraction what's the fraction form of four four over one yeah one. any integer looks like this as a fraction or it, it can we could also say like eight over two or whatever but in its simplest form like this right okay and now we take the reciprocal, and Veronica, you know what the reciprocal is, so what is this? One over four. That's right, one fourth. So, the multiplicative inverse, the reciprocal of four is one fourth. Okay, and the reason why 
this is called multiplicative inverse is because when you multiply these guys together, let's see, let's see what we get. Well, we can either multiply straight across or we can cross cancel these fours, right? If you take a four out of four, you get one in, on either side. So one times one is one and one times one is one. And so we get one. So that's true of any multiplicative inverse and uh, so any number in its multiplicative inverse. They always, if you're multiplying them together, they always make one. This is extremely important for what we're about to talk about. And what we're about to talk about is why we can't divide by zero. So you guys, you, have you heard this, that you can't divide by zero? A meme. Yes. It's a meme. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, isn't it? That you can't divide by zero? Maybe it's like a math yeah, meme among nerds. Yeah, I would say it's kind of a meme. It's just like a, a meme in the sense of something we all learned in school, and so we regurgitate it as a funny joke. Oh, Got I it. thought it was a meme. Like if you if you try to divide by zero on your calculator, it blows up or whatever. Little Rudy, help me out here. <laughs> no, I know what you're talking about, Don. I know what you're talking about. I'm just saying, like, we all know it, and therefore it's a meme, because we use it to be funny. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. I always learn from you guys. Um, <laughs> but we, so, have to have a, we have to have a stream where you learn what memes are. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to get some knowledge. Um. So... Uh, so you you can't divide by zero. You cannot divide by zero. If you have a number and you divide it by zero, then you get... Anybody know? Anybody know what you get? Error? Error? The secret to the universe? The secret to the universe? <laughs> Probably Calculator not. blow up? What? Calculator blow up? Calculator blow up, okay. Well, so you're on the right track because if you do this in your calculator, if you push, put any number in there and divide it by zero, then your calculator will not blow up, but it will say that this value is undefined. Undefined. You cannot define it. Absolutely cannot define it. And so, when we divide by zero, you have to be careful because it's not no answer, it's not impossible, it's not any of those things. The something divided by zero is always going to be undefined. And that's our vocab word of the day, undefined. <laughs> so we know that this is true. We know that if we punch this into our calculator, that this is true, that it's going to come up with undefined or something along those lines, right? But why is it true? Can we prove that it's true? Yes, we can. Let's prove that it's true. Okay, so to start off, let's um, talk about kind of the nature of division, right? So we're, we're obviously we're trying to divide by zero. So let's look at just what division does and how it acts. So, Normally, when you divide by smaller and smaller numbers, you get what kind of answers? Anybody know? What is it? Fractions or decimals? What'd you say? Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Like, she said gendered decimals. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, is my internet not behaving? Okay, can you repeat the question? Yeah. So if the numbers get smaller, when you're, you're dividing by smaller and smaller numbers, what kind of answers do you get? Oh, bigger answers. Bigger and bigger, bigger numbers. answers. Let me take a sip of water here. Burp. Okay. You get bigger and bigger answers. That is true. And we can have an example here. So, for instance, 10 divided by 2, that's 5. We all know that. 
10 divided by 1, a smaller number, by half, right? Mm -hmm. You get 10. So the number increases by half, right? Or increases by 2, rather. That's freaking crazy. So, and then if we keep going, 10 divided by 1 half, that's 20. We can kind of write that out if it seems weird. We're covering it. Five. Wait a second. What's happening here? Five over one? That's you not multiplied. true. I've multiplied. <laughs> <laughs> I've multiplied. Okay. So division is multiplication by the reciprocal. So here we go. 20 over 1. Right. So. Oh dear, my computer. Oh no, Don, 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 fetch me the, the, uh, the, uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the charger, plug it in. the charger, I need it. Oh no, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I, I honestly think I, it wouldn't be a stream with me if we didn't have some sort of problem. I think that's true for all streams, though. <laughs> Computers are, uh, they don't like to work right. No. Internet doesn't like to work right. No, they absolutely don't. I found a shoe. I found a shoe. <laughs> He's on a shoe? That's important <laughs> for this. <laughs> okay. There was a little Barbie shoe under the desk. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's good. That's how small Mickey's feet are. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, to continue. <laughs> To continue, so half of 12, sorry, 10 divided by 1 half, 20, 10 divided by 1 fourth, 40. So if we divide by smaller and smaller numbers, we get bigger and bigger answers, which makes sense because if you divide something into more parts, those parts become smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so basically, the smaller the number you're dividing by, the bigger the quotient. Okay. So what if we divide by zero? That's a pretty small number, right? What should the answer be? Infinity. Infinity. Zero. Infinity. Infinity or zero? What do you think? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Both. I Both. Don't know. Both. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So, saying that x divided by 0 is going to be equal to infinity, interesting answer because from what we just saw, the more a divisor tends towards 0, so the smaller and smaller it gets, the more the quotient tends towards infinity, which we've seen. It gets bigger and bigger, and the divisor gets smaller and smaller. So can we infer, then, that x over 0 is infinity? Can we? Well, let's find out. So 0, zero because 0, 0 is the most a divisor can tend towards 0, right? And infinity is the most mm -hmm. the quotient can tend toward infinity, right? Oh, hang on. Mishka, you might want to reset your position uh -oh. on VC face. <laughs> You're leaning. I'm leaning. I'm always leaning. A lot. Is this better? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... No. No! We can't do this! <laughs> I already told you! I already told you it's undefined! Can't do that! No! no. But I want to. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Can't do it. No, Please. no, no, no. Please. I won't let you. Please. 
<laughs> so let's <laughs> let's dive deeper into what division is. That's how Don and I brute math. We just go pretty please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's use a non-zero number first and go back to to, to safe ground here. Let's go back to stuff that we we learned in school and we we know that it's safe, right? Okay, so let's go back to this number. 10 divided by 2. We did that earlier, right? So 10 divided by 2, how do we write this in like English? How do we describe this concept, 10 divided by 2? What? <laughs> you just did it. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, um, if we were to um, try and explain to someone to um, what it means <laughs> to divide 10 by 2, <laughs> what could we say? Just in, in words. Now describe it in Turkish. <laughs> how, how I many, agree. How many twos go into ten? That's right. How many times can we add two together? How many twos? Um, to get ten. And the answer is what? Five. 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 We can, we can add two five times and we get exactly 10, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. in other words, this mystery number of groups of two equals 10. Oh, wow. So we found the inverse, right? We've seen division and the inverse is multiplication. All right, good. So everything is working out. Just as planned. Good, they're Thank inverses. You. Two sides of the same coin. So, knowing that, if we multiply, um, if we multiply three times two, oh, sorry, five times two, why I say three? Five times two, you get 10, and then you multiply that by our multiplicative inverse, one half, you get five, and what is five? Our original number. Aha! So basically, Aha. we're saying <laughs> x times any number n equals the product times the multiplicative inverse of n, and you get your original number again. Excellent. Wow, wow, wow. Love how that works. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and then, again, let's remember that any number times its multiplicative inverse is what? What does it get? What do we get? Always? 1 over a 5. What Wait, do we get? 1 over x. Right. Yeah. So 1 over x. So x times 1 over x will always give you 1. 1. Yeah. Okay, so these two things are important here. These two things are super important. Alright, so let's continue. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you for bowing so I could see the whole thing. <laughs> Um, so just a side note, if that- yeah, you're, you're like half off the screen now. <laughs> Why? Okay, what if I did this? I think cause if you lean over to look at your writing or something and then <laughs> it gets all over the place. Maybe prop it up. Prop what up? <laughs> your notes. Oh, my notes? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're- You don't have to lean over, over to look, to look at, at them. Done propped it up now I, okay um <laughs> okay so so um god where was i <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh just to kind of contextualize that also contextualize the fact that um x times n equals x and times 1 
over n equals x. Then we can look at um, division of fractions here. So for, for instance, 1 third times 3 is the same, or sorry, 1 third divided by no, one third of times three. <laughs> I can't read my own notes. Yeah. <laughs> is one three, one third times three over one equals one third divided by one third. That's one. Okay, so <laughs> it's the same thing. So we see we see that the rule holds up. Okay, so uh -huh. the, because that's true, because that rule is true, there's a problem. And that problem involves zero. If we want to divide by zero, we need its multiplicative inverse. Because dividing is, after all, the same thing as multiplying by the multiplicative inverse. Aha, which we just saw, right? So, division is yeah. absolutely impossible if there isn't a functional reciprocal. It's impossible. You can't do it. Okay, so since the reciprocal of x is what now? X. 1 over x. 1 over x. Yeah. <laughs> then the reciprocal of 0 should be 1 over 0. 1 over 0. And since we know that rule, 1 over 0 times any number times its multiplicative inverse equals what? Looks like one. Six. Equals one. Okay. But one over zero times zero can't be one. Why is that true? It would be zero. It would be zero because zero anything we would is zero. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> zero times anything is zero. Any, zero times anything is zero. Exactly. So we have a contradiction here. If you have zero groups of something, no matter what it is, you're still going to have zero. So, therefore, the multiplicative inverse of zero cannot exist, and that's why we can't divide by zero. But, I don't know. Do we really trust that? That that really, that's kind of still too, uh, too vague for me. Too abstract. What do you guys think? <laughs> I just think that uh, math geeks are haters, and we should be allowed to divide by zero if we want. Aha! Okay, so that takes us to our next, uh, <laughs> our next uh, thought here. So yeah, you're saying? What do saying, you think of that? Teach. So you're saying? <laughs> you're saying what if we could? What if we just said fuck it and said? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch the language in the classroom. <laughs> He's uh, established himself as the cool teacher. You gonna sit on a chair backwards next? Yeah. <laughs> I got my baseball cap on. Sit on a chair backwards and go, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. What if we just said fuck it? What if we wanted to divide by zero anyway? What if we just said, uh, oh, by the way, um... Uh, well, I remember when people uh, said that we couldn't uh, do the square root of a negative number. Yeah, I remember that. Or the thing we learned uh -huh. last time. Or, yeah, well, true. But irrational numbers fit into our our number system. The, the reason why we can't do a square root of a negative number, anybody know? You can't multiply two numbers and make a negative. Exactly. Yeah. If we if we multiply two negative numbers, so negative one here to the second power would be positive. So we can't we can't do this. This, is, this doesn't exist. Except it does exist because mathematicians said fuck it, <laughs> and they said we're defining the square root of negative one as i, and so now we use i in all sorts of co complex numbers, and it's just accepted. Within that sounds like cheating. The it does, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, sounds like uh, sounds like we can in fact divide by zero. Sounds like it, right? So 
So what if we just did that? What if we just um, made like the people who created imaginary numbers? And I'm going to define 1 over 0 now as some sort of symbol. Let's do the sparkle emoji. How about that? <laughs> so that's what this is now. Boom. I said we can divide by 0. And now it's this. And anytime you want to put a division by 0 in your uh, math, uh, this is it. So just draw the sparkle emoji and everybody knows what you mean and it's great. Done. Did the stream freeze for anybody else or just me? Uh, it's done it a couple times but my internet sucks. Hmm. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think I know why. <laughs> but I don't want to face it. Because your internet also oh, sucks. It's, Correct. It's fine. I see it now. <laughs> I had to refresh. <laughs> okay. All right, so what do you guys think? What do you guys think of my new symbol? Um, I think it's perfect. I think we have solved the problem. I think so, too. Yeah, so I think there's no issue. Yeah, should I just end the stream here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all done. <laughs> this can't work. There's a reason why it can't work. <laughs> and I'll show you why the reason is... Uh, I'll show you what the reason is, rather. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, let me draw it smaller up here. 1 over 0 equals sparkle emoji. So let's just assume that everybody thinks this is cool, and all the mathematicians are using my sparkle emoji to mean 1 over 0. Um, so that means that here, our, our multiplicative yeah. inverse of 0 is going to be sparkle and if sparkle is the multiplicative inverse of zero then zero times sparkle must equal what what's anything huh? times its multiplicative inverse one one aha okay so sparkle times zero must equal one makes sense so if we have two of these, we have zero times sparkle, we know that's one, plus zero times sparkle, we know that's one. If we add these together, what do we get? Two. Two! All right, great! Simple. So let's look at this in terms of the distributive property. Anybody remember that guy? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Not really. Not really? Okay. No. So let, let me give you an example. So we have something called something like 4 times 3 in parentheses plus 5 times 3. That means that we have 4 times 3, which is 12 plus 5 times 3, which is 15, which is 27. But you can rewrite this as, we can add 4 and 5 together, 9 times 3, which we know is also 27. So, and we can also remove a common factor and rewrite it. So, let's, let's, let me see, can I delete this? Hell yeah, okay. Let's do now, let's do 2 times 7 plus 3 times 7 equals... You're doing it behind our heads so we can't see it. Oh no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We're not learning anything. My big old head. <laughs> I can see it on my chalkboard. Oh, can oh, you? Yeah. Without us in the way? <laughs> no, I see you guys. Sorry, hold on. Hold on. Just lower us a little. Feature. Hold on, hold on. I'll write it over here. I'll write it here. 2 times 7 plus 3 times 7. We can rewrite that as 7 times 2 plus 3. And it'll give us the same answer. Right? 14 plus 21. This is the same thing as 
7 times 5, which is 35. Okay, so going back to our zero problem. Boom, boom, boom. A boom, boom, boom. Switching my pages of notes. Do, 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 do. If we apply that to our little zero expression, then we have two equals. Well, let's remove our sparkle. Put it on the outside here. Sparkle. You're doing it again. Ay, 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 Just ay, lower ay. our PNGs. <laughs> yeah. Make it just our heads. Tuck us yeah. in. Just, yeah, just make it just our heads. It's okay. Teacher, tuck us in. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys cozy? I think my head. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So, <laughs> Boo -boo -ga -ga. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> um, so it makes sense that we can take out this sparkle and it should be sparkle times zero plus zero equals two, right? Because this is the same uh -huh. thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Does it make sense, Ton? <laughs> <laughs> Say it again! Okay. So let's do it with n numbers that aren't so abstract. So let's do like 2 times 4 plus 2 times 6. Okay? This should give us the same answer no matter how we rearrange this. So if we just did it where we were working inside the parentheses first, we would say 2 times 4, which is what? Eight. Eight. And Eight. two plus two times six, which is what? Twelve. Twelve. And then together it's twenty. That's right. Together it's twenty. Okay. But we have a two in common here. So let's remove the two and say two times four plus six. We can do that because we oh, can stick yeah, around. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I that remember is this. what you did not explain in your examples before. You just breezed through them with almost no explanation whatsoever, and that's why it didn't make any sense. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bad teacher. Bad. <laughs> well, then I'm glad I stopped to go back. Yeah. This makes a lot more sense. It's the common okay. number that matters. It's the common yeah, number yeah, that yeah. matters. Yes. Thank you, Misha. Okay. So just to complete this, 4 plus 6 is 10, 2 times 10 is same thing, 20, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, we did the same thing here with our zero expression. We have 0 times something plus 0 times something, that's 2. We see because 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay. But... If we pull this sparkle out, this should be equal the same thing. It should be 2 equals this stuff, because it's the same as this stuff on top, right? So, we pull yeah. the sparkle out. Sparkle times 0 plus 0 should be 2. But what is 0 plus 0? Zero. 0. 0. And sparkle times 0, then, can't... It must two. be must be zero, right? <laughs> because anything yeah. times zero is zero. But we have a contradiction oh here. Oh my god, it doesn't make sense. We already defined sparkle times zero as one. Right? We already did that. That's how we get how we got two in the first place. So yeah. does that mean that one equals two? Now that's just silly. Yeah, that's just silly. So it doesn't work with our current number system. If we were to tweak it somehow, and somehow, you know, make this fit in somehow, like we did imaginary numbers, then maybe one could equal two here. Maybe we could say sparkle is the multiplicative inverse of zero and so we can make that possible but it's not possible at this point in time and that's why we can't divide by zero that's why when we divide by zero it's undefined and that's 
that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense, folks? Any questions? Yes, that made sense. Thank you. Okay, now let's do a little experiment. I think we should still try to divide by zero. I think we should keep trying until it works. I agree. I think that would be interesting. <laughs> okay, now I want to do a little experiment. So let's look at a coordinate plane. Uh -huh. A very well-drawn coordinate plane here. <laughs> I don't like these things. Why not? <clears throat> Why don't you like them? I because they're creepy. They're creepy. Interesting. I don't think I've ever heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> coordinate planes are. Creepy. Okay. Um, does anybody remember how to figure out slope? Slope of a line? Y equals mx plus b. True, okay. Is there, there's also an, another equation, you remember that? No. Okay. It's, if you're given two points, y2 Oh, then you y1. subtract them. Yeah, x2 minus x1. Okay? Alright, well, let's look at a horizontal line let's say we go through right here and we can pick any two points on this line so let's pick this one and this one and we'll figure out the slope of the line okay what's the uh, coordinates to point number one here uh, two, two. Two, two. Two, two. <laughs> and what's the and five two yep five two what do we notice about these two points? They have- they're a straight line, so they have, uh, the y axis, or the- mm -hmm. uh, the y and con. That's right, yeah, they have the same y. So, that would be 2 minus 2, and then 5 minus 2, and then 2 minus 2 is 0, and 5 minus 2 is 3, which means the slope of any horizontal line is... Zero. Zero. But let's let's uh, let's try and uh, figure out what the slope of a vertical line is. How about that? So we know the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Anybody want to predict what the slope of a vertical line is? Don't need to erase that. Undefined. Undefined. Ooh, why do you think it's undefined? Because it'll be, um, <clears throat> oh, the x's will be at zero. That's right. Yep. Or, yeah, the x2 minus x1 will be zero. x2 minus x1 will be zero. And just to show that visually, we have a pretend that's on the three. Let's see, we have this here and this here. So point A and point B. Point A would be... Three, four. Point B would be three, three. So we have y two, which is three minus four, and then x two, x one. Those x's are the same, and we're dividing by zero, which we can't do, which we just said. So this is. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Undefined. Okay. <laughs> so now I have one more question for you guys. Okay. And this uh -huh. relates to the last stream. So. We're being quizzed? We're, I know. I was just gonna say. Why were we quizzed on that? We were supposed to remember it? <laughs> Is zero even or odd? Zero is even. Zero even? is even, why? Because it uh, can be divided by two. Yeah. Exactly. I remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's all from me. 
That was it, teacher? That was it. Can you draw stuff for us now? Sure, what do you want me to draw? <laughs> um... Snoopy, what you think would happen if we successfully divided by zero? Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess we should be working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think if we could successfully divide by zero? What would happen? Um, I think there will be another Big Bang and the universe will start over. That might but not this be This so time bad. we all look like the Who's from Whoville. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I don't remember what And they... we're as small as them, too. I don't know what they look like. They have the, like, snout things going on. Yeah. Snout. Like, wow. their, their nose. Um, I don't know how to explain it. You just have to see a picture. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is Snoopy? No, that's who. Oh. What? Who? <laughs> Uh, you you nailed it. Snoopy? Yes. Okay. I think Snoopy should present uh, the world peace making divide by zero presentation. Okay. When the time comes, who are we going to trust? Some Snoopy. scientist who worked really hard and solved it? Or Snoopy? Probably Snoopy. 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 Naturally. There he is. Oh, good job! Why does he have hands? <laughs> he does have he does have hands. Snoopy has hands. Snoopy has human hands. <laughs> well, just in peanuts. Get the hygiene. He like, walks on two legs and everything. It's like that. Like, well, I'm looking it up now, and he has like. I th he doesn't really have a defined thumb. I guess maybe that's what messed me up. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Any other math questions for me before we sign off here? Um. What's your favorite uh, equation or concept in math? Okay, so we are about to go over my favorite concept next week. Ooh. So, yeah. Is it a surprise? Um, yeah, can we have a hint? I can tell you. It has to do with the number nine. Oh. Oh, is it the Beatles or whatever? Number nine. <laughs> number nine. Number nine. Number <laughs> nine. Nine is supposed to be like, um, I don't know what the term is perfect number or something like that. Like, the way it multiplies is, uh, something about the way it multiplies. The term is badass motherfucking number. <laughs> that rules. <laughs> and owns. Is it because it's the biggest number? <laughs> nine? You the think biggest, nine is it is the biggest, biggest number? number? <laughs> yeah. Why can you guys count? <laughs> well, actually, you're onto something there. Oh. <laughs> Which I will explain next time. That nine is the biggest number. Not, well, <laughs> it's not the biggest number, so I'll explain it right now. It's not the biggest number, but we do use base 10. So it is, like, the biggest before we reset to zero. Which is um, part of the reason 
why why it's so special and why it can do so many weird things so like if we were in like base seven then six would be the magic number that does all kinds of cool things hmm interesting Oh, uh, for Christmas, uh, Rudy, we're planning to do Gardic Phone. Are we playing that on stream? I would like to. Okay. Let's if you're do okay it. with that. Hell yeah. yeah. I think it's just going to be the three of us, though. Okay, that's fine. I think he said she might join, depending. Right. But I don't think Benny is. I like this song. I can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, can't I mean, hear I'm it. sure it's audible on the stream, but I have the stream turned all the way down. I know. I I turned up the stream and it was barely audible. I'm just watching Mickey Boogie. Yeah, he's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, do you like the holidays? Yeah. I do. I like uh, doing good deeds. I like how it's a little crisp in the air. I like uh, I like holiday treats like cookies and hot chocolate. I like all those things. We tried to have hot cho chocolate the other day, and they were sold out. <gasps> yeah, it was. Uh, an affront. Yeah, I was like, okay, Mickey, I'm about to get festive right now. And I tried <laughs> to get a peppermint hot chocolate and a sugar plum danish, and they were out of both of them. I was like, well, forget it. And th those are your favorite, <laughs> those are some of your favorite earth tweet treats, I think. Absolutely. Do they have um, anything like that on your planet? Not really. What kind of things do you like to eat there? Mostly pizza. Oh, huh. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> a planet on which the main dietary staple is pizza. <laughs> That's correct. Boogie. <laughs> Boogie. <laughs> Wonderland. Since I can't hear any music, it just looks like Mickey is going nuts all by himself. And good for him. <laughs> it like no one's watching, am I right? I wish I had hands. <laughs> I just... You don't? <laughs> Not on my model. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know what you mean, but you made it sound really funny. <laughs> I wish like, I had only. <laughs> yeah, I was actually doing all that writing and drawing with the thing in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And talent. Yeah. <laughs> um, anybody have any final words? Um, we cannot rest until we can successfully divide by zero. So please keep all the tired, exhausted mathematicians in your thoughts and prayers. Yes. Yes, I will. Dawn, any final words? Uh. Before I make you tea. get me a pastry. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, my final words are eclair. <laughs> so true. And now it's time for eclair. All right, sparkle and shine, you guys. I know this one was a little short. But I feel like I packed a lot of information into it <laughs> mm -hmm. and and confused people. So I failed. <laughs> I got it eventually. I got it eventually. I got it eventually. <laughs> you know I'm easily confused by math, so. <laughs> Alright, so once again, Sparkle and Shine, you guys. Thanks for joining me, Dawn and Veronica. Dawn and Ron. Thanks for having us. <laughs> I don't have a, a signature send off yet, I, nor do I. Although last night I said it to be Sayonara suckers. 
Sayonara, suckers. <laughs> Bye! Bye!